Hello, Internet. Welcome to Was It Worth It, brought to you by Shark Tank Media. Uh, season 2, Episode 3 is the episode that we're on right now. Uh, my name is Isaac. And my name is Dane. And this is the show where we play not necessarily super, super mainstream games and tell you if it was uh, worth the price of admission, basically. Well, let's kick it off. Dane, which game did we play this time? Uh, this week, we played Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut, uh, which is the standalone version of the Dragonfall campaign. Uh, the first major expansion for the hit indie title, Shadowrun Returns, which earned a whopping $1.8 million on Kickstarter back in 2012. Uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut was developed by Harebrain Schemes and can be purchased on Steam for $14.99. Uh, now, this game, as its name suggests, is based on the world of Shadowrun, which began as a, a tabletop pen and paper RPG in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, sort of a picture a sci-fi cyberpunk version of our world crossed with traditional fantasy tropes like elves, orcs, magic spells, and dragons. Yeah, uh, it, it is really a bizarre mix of fantasy and sci-fi, but it's... It works it, really well. Yes, it's, 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 it's awesome. absolutely wonderful. I've always been a fan of the Shadowrun campaign, especially because a lot of it uh, uh, takes place in Seattle. Not this game specifically, but just Shadowrun in general, other stories in Shadowrun. And I think the original Shadowrun Returns uh, uh, takes place in, in the Seattle area, which, you know, we're from Seattle here at Shark Tank, so mm -hmm. always, uh, I've always liked that. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the game Dragonfall itself would fit right in with any fan of the tabletop Shadowrun campaigns as it falls into the tactical RPG genre and plays much like some of the classic RPGs on the PC like the original Fallout games or the Baldur's Gate series. And, and you said you had others in mind that you were comparing it to, right? Yeah, uh, a as I was playing the game, it sort of is a perfect mix of two games that I really, really enjoyed at really different times of my life. Back in junior high and high school, especially summertime, when you absolutely have nothing to do. Yeah. I remember playing a lot of Neverwinter Nights, and uh, ne Neverwinter Nights, you know, obviously is a really, really famous, really popular game. Mm -hmm. it, it does sort of the top-down isometric thing, really similar to the way Shadowrun does. Mm -hmm. And then there are also elements of XCOM that I felt uh, Shadowrun sort of took the perfect elements of and really melded it uh, in, in, into its combat system w with your your cover system. You typically get two moves, mm -hmm. uh, th th things like that. Oh yeah, definitely. The combat does remind me of sh uh, you know strategy or tactical RPGs like XCOM, or I guess XCOM. Would you consider it an RPG? Yeah, it, it, I guess it's officially a strategy game there definitely sure. are there are definitely rpg elements i mean obviously you don't want to take your absolutely green guys into combat if you're going up against something that you know is going to be absolutely ridiculous or something sure. to that effect but uh, but xcom the focus uh, is really a lot more in the way of combat where a game like shadowrun or some of the other games we compared shadowrun to really have a deep and rich storylines oh absolutely shadowrun has a fan fantastic narrative and that was one of the mm -hmm. things that uh i have written down on my list uh, to talk about actually <laughs> yeah uh, Sh shadowrun is a really updated really polished just absolutely n near perfect version of those sort of early you know uh t 2000 neverwinter nights baldur's gate sort of games uh oh yeah even some of the ones back in the 90s like uh, icewind dale and and the original baldur's gate definitely yeah absolutely um it has a lot of quirks that I think a, a lot of the devs were big fans of those games. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it, it just does a lot of little things that, that it really doesn't hold your hand with. Like, uh, say you need to go up to a keypad, you know, the, they're obviously, uh, you're, the whole essence of Shadowrun is, you know, being a Shadowrunner, you're doing a lot <laughs> Jacking of, Jacking like, into the Matrix? <laughs> sort of, yeah. Uh, you're, you're doing a lot of Black Ops things, you're typically going into places that you, you know, shouldn't be, and either gaining information or assassinating a target, or, you know, otherwise doing things that the, uh, company that owns, you know, the, the facility or whatever wouldn't have you, uh, be doing. Uh, right. so, so in that case, you're, you're usually bypassing a lot of security, so you end up uh, interacting with keypads a lot. And even if somebody has told you the code to the keypad, you still have to go through your notes. Uh, and, and the game takes very good notes for you based on the things that you've discovered through a conversation and things like that. Um, you still have to go through your notes, you still have to find the number, and you still have to press the keys yourself. Which might not seem like a really big thing, but in a lot of games nowadays, they'll kind of hold your hand in that you'll go up to the keypad and, you know, there'll be a choice that says, you know, 
uh, press in blah 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 one two three four five like you know so and so told you that the code was and yeah I thought that a lot of the um yeah the, the, there were a lot of kind of little things that, like that 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 really didn't hold your hand sort of going off the narration again the game is not terribly cinematic it goes sort of into the style that a lot of the old school again. Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter Nights, that sort of thing, go into, which is the fact that, you know, it's it's real text-heavy, there's a lot of reading, but that sort of opens up the theater of the mind in a way that a lot of current games don't, and I was kind of a fan of that back then. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, you get a portrait and a, j just a general picture of what the guy who you're talking to looks like, but the narration will go into their demeanor and the gravelly sound of their voice and, you know, things like that, whereas... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, w whereas um, a lot of current games are like, well, this is your cutscene, I'm going to try to make the guy's voice gravelly, and I'm going to try to, you know, animate him where he has a demeanor that you know, I want him to have, but it doesn't really open up a theater of the mind in the way that, you know, you're sort of cracking into a book and imagining a really good story as opposed to looking looking at a video. I've, I've always been a fan of the theater of the mind and using verbs and adjectives to explain what's going on in the situation rather than just literally, you know, essentially watching TV and watching something play out and not having any sort of... Uh... Basically, the theater of the mind does a far better job of telling a story than a, than a video does, in, in, in my opinion. So. Yeah, and and you really have to to give props to the writers, you know, who worked on this game because uh, well, they, the writing they... <laughs> the writing was painstaking. I, I it's it's absolutely outstanding, and I can't imagine how much time just went into the just just the description of, of the scenes <laughs> and, and the yeah. description of someone's demeanor, and you know, th the story is wonderful uh, along with a really good combat system. So th this. I, I didn't know coming into it, but this evoked a lot of good memories of, uh, of old games that I played. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm, I mean, I'm really happy to hear that. I, I completely agree with you. Uh, um, I had that same experience in terms of the nostalgia factor. I really uh, enjoyed playing, you know, the Baldur's Gate games and and, and the first two Fallout games I, I played somewhat more recently. Right. Uh, and I say that because they came out quite a long time ago and I played them maybe five or six years ago. But yeah, I, I really love those games as well, and, and as a fan of those games, it's it's hard not to like something like this, which, like you said, is totally a love letter uh, uh, to those games. And, and you know, Tim and I, uh, Tim's our other host for Was It Worth It, he and I have a show called Name Your Game, where we occasionally interview uh, uh, developers and artists for games, or, you know, just people in the industry in general, and we, we talked to Mike McCain, who was the uh, the art director for Dragonfall, and, and one of the lead artists for Shadowrun Returns, and and, um, you know, he, he basically told us exactly what uh, our, our hunch was here, which is that, yes, a lot of the developers absolutely loved those games. And this was their opportunity to, to do their rendition of those games. Uh, uh, and, and it shows. And, and, you know, we've said enough positive things about this game just in the first 10 minutes of this episode uh, to, to make it obvious that we both uh, think that it's worth it for that fourteen ninety nine price. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> Stop putting word. No, uh, uh, it's it's absolutely worth it. I, being a backer of the original campaign, I don't know about you, but I was obviously <laughs> affluent enough to see that this would be a monster hit. No, um, I so did. You, you backed the Kickstarter? Yes, I did. Uh, awesome. Uh, so I and you know the the funny thing and something you might know about me if you know we're friends or whatever. I have a bad <laughs> um, habit of buying more games than I can play. Uh, which is funny because I hadn't touched the original uh, uh, Shadowrun Returns. Exactly, I hadn't touched the base game whatsoever. But uh, uh, apparently, through the Kickstarter, uh, I, I got the message like two weeks ago or something when we, were, when we were kind of deciding which game to do. And you guys had kind of decided it like before I even knew this. They were like, "Oh yeah, uh, well we're just going to give you a, a free copy of, of this, you know, the the director's cut." So I was fortunate enough to uh, to, to sort of bust into that. Yeah, so that's really lucky. You know, uh, we also got a copy as well for, for this review, and, and I'm glad it came together that way, because really, 
it's it's an awesome game, and I'm sure <laughs> and neither one of us paid anything for it. No, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I ended up paying money for it forever ago, so it feels like yeah, for backing it, absolutely. Uh, and and so we might as well uh, break the game down a little more because there's a lot to say about it, and and we can kind of do the typical thing that that we usually do here, and and kind of go uh, uh, by certain aspects. And, and let's let's start by talking about the graphics. Uh, uh, how do you feel about the game stylistically, graphically? Um, I feel graphically that the game is a really polished version of a lot of those old is isometric uh, kind of adventure games it, it it absolutely won't you know blow you out of the water if yeah. you are a, 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 a crisis fan or something like that <laughs> but the graphics absolutely do evoke i think what they were going for oh which yeah is for a sure really kind of almost post-apocalyptic run down cyberpunk uh it's a dystopia for sure yeah yeah no the uh the, so many of the environments are just so awesome that they, they really ev evoke sort of what i had in my theater the mind as it, as i was playing you know various shadowrun campaigns uh, that well, i've been involved in well yeah and it's great because the graphics themselves they're they're somewhat simplistic i mean they're definitely polished like you said and and the game runs nice and smooth because of the simplistic graphics but really the best thing that they do is they look just good enough to paint the picture without giving you too much in the way of the detail that comes in the story and the dialogue right exactly and and so they really did a good job with that and and also it's just so cool that the game takes place in a modern world so we're in the this game takes place in in germany in the future and i mentioned that the previous one takes place in the seattle area and possibly other uh, aspects of the united states i'm not sure right. and it's, it's cool to see that too because it just helps uh, a little bit with the immersion you know being sort of familiar with the world that they're they're portraying uh, an alternate version of well and not only that different locales definitely have different feelings like uh Berlin is supposed to be this really uh, anarchy-centric, almost lawless world. Yeah. And you're sort of put put in charge of uh, kind of fostering the development of your, you know, loosely held together community. Mm -hmm. um, of, Definitely. Of, of anarchists, almost. And, uh, you know, obviously with no law, there, <laughs> there are some challenges that you face. Um, so, something that I wouldn't mind doing is, why don't we compare our experiences with, say, the very first mission, which is obviously something that we both uh, ran through. If, oh, if yeah. you, it, I actually went through it twice because, uh, and this is something that, that is worth mentioning about the game in general, but also worth saying about my first run through that first mission, is the, the skills that you choose in the game, and there are a lot of skills, uh, you know, some of them are combat related specifically, some of them are, are sp just related to either um, hacking into computers or controlling robotic drones. Some of them are related to healing uh, and, and magic. And, and so all of those different skills, you, you get to customize and choose where you spend your points or, or the karma, as it's called in the game. Right. And, 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 and they really go about it in a really interesting way. They kind of have some pre-made templates, if you will, for mm -hmm. f for the different, like, if, if you want to be a street samurai, if, if you want to be a decker, if, if you want to be a shaman, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, or you can just go absolutely, you know, rogue, as it were, and literally just take your pile of points and do customize your character all the way down to his, you know, pinky toe. Which, of course, it's that would be recommended to do when you're more familiar with the different types of skills and, and how they how they uh, interact with the, the world and, and the different, you know, aspects of combat, because you could potentially spread all of your points everywhere and end up not being very good at anything. Uh, but if you are familiar with it, you could create a really varied, really interesting character. Yeah. Uh, but what I was going to say is that those skills that you choose will actually change dialogue options, which is the coolest thing ever. Yes. Uh, so basically, if you decide, hey, I like healing, I want to make sure my med kits heal more, I'm going to go into the bio, uh, biotech, I think it's called, mm -hmm. is the skill for that. And if you have, uh, um, you know, a few points in the biotech, you'll get into situations where, you know, one of your teammates are hurt or a story thing is happening where someone's hurt and it actually gives you a special dialogue choice where you can like check for vitals or something like that. And it may potentially actually change the way the story goes, or you might actually save a character who like, let's say later in the story, and this is just all hypothetical, there might be a character that's going to die and then you pick the special biotech option and you save them from dying and then they're alive in the story for the rest of the game. And I love stuff like that where you can change things based on, you know, dialogue options and your skills. 
it, it, it sounds like you may have been a little bit uh, healer centric. No, well, I, I did that uh, because something happened within the story, and I thought, oh, I should do this again, uh, except with some some healing skills to see if it actually changes the outcome. Uh, sometimes all you'll get is just a different bit of dialogue to read, and it's just interesting in that regard, but mm -hmm. other times it does actually change things. Uh, if you have Decker abilities, uh, which is like the hacking uh, skill, which is cool, there's a whole side like mini game when you hack into a computer, you become a virtual version oh, of yourself. It's, it, it's, it's so wonderful. Yeah, it's fun. I picked Decker for that one reason, and uh, yeah. I was able to utilize my skills uh, more than enough times to uh, save my own ass and uh, find things out and open doors that I wasn't supposed to open and things like that. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I went through the first mission two different times uh, with some different skills because I just wanted to see if I could change the outcome, or at the very least, just see what sort of slight little differences occur. And then also, different characters will respond to you differently based on how you treat them, how you talk to them. Mm -hmm. If you give the dick responses and blow people <laughs> off, they get mad and they don't become your friend, uh, and vice versa if you're cool to them, uh, which, is, which is pretty awesome. And I can only imagine... The, the work that went into all of the different algorithms and possibilities and whatnot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, you know, don't, don't get me wrong, that's only the first mission. I mean, personally, I'm 10 hours into the game and I'm still finding out things that I didn't really know that you could do uh, and having things opened up to me. The yeah. game is incredibly deep for 15 bucks. Oh, yeah. And, 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 I, can't, and I can't stress that enough. Yeah, um, and the, oh, ahead, sorry. I, I was going to say, the best part about how deep it is and how many different options you can take that give you different e either slight or major possibilities mm -hmm. is the replay value the sheer yes. replay value that comes with that because every, when i play games just like this where i make a choice and then i think i need to know what happens if i made the other choice mm -hmm. i am more inclined to play through it again and i get excited i think i can't wait till i get to that part where i had those different options because i just need to know what happens Oh yeah, and you know, what? one of the big pluses about the game is that there are so many options. In one of the last missions I ended up doing, there were multiple factions that I was working for uh, mm -hmm. at the same time. There was one faction that said, okay, well, we're going to keep you on retainer for a while, but if we give you directions, even if they're not for a mission that we're directly involved in, you need to follow them. And you need to follow them blindly, and you need to absolutely, you may have a moral, you know, conundrum yeah exactly uh against what we're telling you to do but you need to do it so i i went into this building and the leader of a certain organization was there and uh i you know get over my comm link uh we don't care what happens to anybody else but you need to leave the a leader alive he's one of ours you have to do this you have no choice i mean <laughs> You do have a choice. I mean, obviously the dude wasn't very well armored. I could have taken out my SMG and blasted him right there. Sure. But I chose to, you know, follow the shadow organization's d directions and things like that. And yeah. I'm, you know, th there were so many different things going on that that mission alone, even though it had nothing to do with the shadow organization, could have gone one of so many different ways. I had so many options. There are at least four or five different ways that I can... Uh, think that it would play out, you know, based on what you do, and probably some ways that, you know, I'm not aware of right now because I don't have that much foresight, but, <laughs> I mean, as as the mission's going, you sort of see things forming around you, and you sort of, uh, you know, realize that uh, the, the the effects that are taking place caused by the choices you're making, and, yeah. you know, just the fact that there's so many different ways that, that, uh, that things can turn out, I'm gonna have to play this game probably two, three times at least. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if I have time, I, I'll definitely uh, play through it more than once. Uh, and it, man, it is making me want to even just go back and play the original Fallout's because I have such a fondness for those games too. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a fantastic game. Is, is there more you wanted to touch on? Well, I mean, we're we're both kind of gushing about like the really really good things that we uh, find about the game, and there were one or two uh, down points. I, I I did have to pay, play the original mission twice because um, my guy got smoked the first time, and that's more of because it's kind of an escape mission and I was standing my ground too much trying yeah. to fight people so it was kind of my yeah. fault. Yeah, uh, the combat can be pretty tough. Yeah, the, the, the combat does have a bit of a learning curve where you kind of have to 
experiment with a few of your party's abilities to sort of see who's capable of mm -hmm. what and, you know, what every little thing does. Sometimes you can get swarmed pretty easily and the enemies will just occasionally have that, that rock solid luck and, and just hit you turn after turn and you just get overwhelmed. You can't heal quickly enough, or at least that's happened to me. <laughs> well, right. And, you know, being kind of a save scummer that I am because I want to see, you know, how things would turn out if this had gone differently. I, I was doing so more because of the choices I was making and less because of, like, the BS roles that the, you know, NPCs were getting fighting against me. Right. And, you know, yeah, every so often they'd get a BS role and, and almost kill one of my guys, but then you, the situations you're put in aren't overwhelming unless you're, you know, supposed to, like, run your ass off and get out of there. And, and, and I mean... The, the initial job taking two tries for me, I don't think was necessarily a negative thing. I think that, you know, the, the combat has a bit of a learning curve and you need to, you know, get your ass behind cover. And, yeah, you, know, you definitely have to play down a pretty bit. safe. Yeah. I have to say, too, another thing, I, I want to go back and make another character and I want to make like a big ass troll and yes. just crank up my strength and body and do melee. That yeah. sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, man. Yeah, there are uh, a few, like, melee guys with, like, baseball bats that'll run at you like, occasionally, and yeah. their body and strength isn't real great, so you can usually, you know, t tear them down before they get to you, but... Yeah, with an assault rifle or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Really, the last thing I want to say is that the exploration and finding uses for kind of your different abilities in different situations is just sort of goes back to the choice that you have. You know, the, the choice is super, yeah. super plural. I mean, it's... It's really fun to poke around places. It's really fun to, you know, explore new dialogue options. It's really fun to see what this new new Berlin world has in store for you, and absolutely, the, and and the cause and effect of of your choices. And like yeah. I said, it's it's all about choice, and and it's lots and lots of fun. Yep. Once again, just so much well written, well designed content for a fifteen dollar price point. So definitely worth it. We definitely recommend it. Last thing I want to say about it too, never mentioned the music. It's really cool and it fits the setting really, really well. It's oh, kind it's, of it's so eerie. It's so yeah, good. dark, dark, industrial, very much cyberpunk like sounding. It's 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 great. They did a good job with that too. Uh, so I figured I'd touch on that. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's how we feel about Shadowrun uh, uh, Dragonfall Director's Cut. You need to have it. You're a criminal if you don't spend your fifteen bucks. And if you do get it, you're still a criminal because you're you're shadow running. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're, you're not exactly on the right side of the law in this game, but uh, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, we we don't have a game picked out just yet for our next episode. Uh, uh, we'll just make it a surprise again, like we have been so far this season. Why not? That's uh, more exciting, of course. And yeah, I guess that's that's all we have to say. Uh, uh, so make sure to to hit like if you liked this uh, video on YouTube. Uh, comment if you have anything you, you want to say about it. Uh, feel free to give us suggestions for games if you'd like to see us play any games or anything you'd like to hear us do differently. We always want to hear feedback. Uh, make sure to check out sharktank.com. That's shark with a C. And, you know, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for listening. Thanks a lot. See you next time. <laughs>